If you haven't watched part one of this scambait, then please watch it now by clicking this link. In part one, we met Pastor Uchenna, a scammer looking for donations to his fictional orphanage. We got the scammer to waste his time speaking to our phone bots. We then told him Lenny and Lily, together with their church, had raised $44,000 for the orphanage. The scammer made a list of all the electronic products he wanted us to buy for him. We introduced the scammer to Sister Dave at our church. Sister Dave asked the scammer for a list of all the orphaned children, and the scammer, Pastor Uchenna, created a huge list of imaginary children. Please enjoy part two. The next request was for Scammer Uchenna to put together a short video about the orphanage to show to the elders of our church. Uchenna tried excuses such as staff being on leave, but he promised to produce the video at some point, no doubt hoping to get his scam donation without this additional effort. Sister Day was having none of his excuses. She said it was insulting to not want to provide the video immediately, so she expected it to be provided tomorrow. So Uchenna reluctantly agreed to make a video about a non-existent orphanage with non-existent children and non-existent staff, and he only had 24 hours to do it. Sister Dave was glad everything was back on track and reassured Uchenna that the package of electronic products would be ready in a few days. After some more excuses, Pastor Uchenna finally sent us the video of the imaginary orphanage in a derelict building in Okeagbo, Nigeria. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is Kanawate Charity Foundation. My name is Pastor Uchenda Bishop Salishu. I'm Pastor Asmike Bagua. I'm Evangelist Emmanuel Mwabwezi. Okay. Let's go inside. Uchenna has had a sign hurriedly drawn up. The name doesn't even match the name of the charity. Welcome, Kalamata Charity Foundation. This is Kalamata Charity Foundation President. He is uh, one of the best coach who normally used to bring books and other materials to the school. So, this is a children sport material. You can see these ones have got spoiled. They normally you know, injure the children. So, we don't need it anymore. We need to fix the new ones. So, here. Is our one of our building project material. This is the road. So this is our one of the our building projects. So because of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, we could not be able to complete them. So this is our building project. So we are working on it, but this period, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we could not be able to, you know, complete the project. So we need to complete it because there's most of the place where we worship. The children always gather here, and uh, you know, we worship here. So they are not comfortable, as you can see. So, you can see that the buildings we need to complete them, and the more we leave them, both in the sun and the rain, always you know spoil most of the things, and the children are not comfortable. Yeah. So his first video was a tour of a derelict site with a couple of posters stuck up. Let's see if his next video is any better. That the elders of the church and all the church committees will do more to 
to support me and I'm not necessarily to support me. So they feed the staff of the Karamate Karamate Sarifi Foundation. Most of them are on leave, but we have some staff on the ground. So Uchenna has gathered eight of his family and friends and crammed them into the best room and coach them on what to say. See how many of them can remember the name of the charity. So this is uh, the Kamamate Charity Foundation staffs, others are on leave and uh, our school will resume on uh, next week, by next week, our school will resume. So, um, you can see these are our staff rooms and these are our staff members. So, as I said before, my name is Pastor Uchenna Vicent Alefne. I'm Pastor Azubike Emmanuel George. Okay, with our mommy, with her. Um, this is Chidema Ifan, the midwife. The of Kanamate Charity. Of Kanamate Charity Foundation, yes. the children midwife. My name is Franka Ogene. I'm a welfare department. And I'm a Charity Foundation. My name is Mrs. Jubril Salawat. I'm the coordinator, the children coordinator for the Kalamate Charity Foundation. My name is Abiola Luatosi. I'm to take care of the children, so I raise them in order. I'm Natala Marufat. I am one of the staff here from Karamezu Society Foundation. So we are taking care of children, monitor them, do things in the order so that they will not be dirty and just keep them clean. So that is my work. I am Chris Udechuku. I am in charge of the environmental sanitation in Karamezu Charity Foundation. I am Mr. Evangelist Emmanuel. The coordinator, chief coordinator of the Charlie Martins Foundation. Foundation. So, thank you so much. Uh, the elders of the church, you can see yes. these are the staff of Kanamate Charity yes. Foundation. Yes. As uh, the elders advise us to do the short video and send to them. So, we have other, uh, we have our, uh, our other staff, but they are not around so they are going to come back by weekend so we want to say thank you a very big thank you thank to you. all the elders in the church especially uh mr or daddy robert leonardo lenny we want to say a big thank you to sister lily we want to say a very big thank you to sister davina wilson so and all the elders of the church, thank you very much. I'll spare you listening to any more of Uchenna's waffle and lies. Thank you. God bless you. I will be praying for all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Dave thanked the scammer for the video and promised that he wouldn't have to wait much longer for the products to be sent. Lenny too said how proud he was of Uchenna and that the video would be shown in the conference hall of the church. Uchenna was encouraged. To make the scammer work a little harder, Sister Dave asked for the names of the staff members too. And the scammer obliged with another handwritten list of names he had to make up. It may look like these are on headed paper, but Uchenna is too miserly even for that, and has simply reused the same header for each of the lists. Sister Dave agreed to show the list to the congregation, and also how amazing it was that so few staff could look after so many children. Uchenna remained enthusiastic, so Sister Dave rewarded him by offering him some extra funds for more staff if he was willing to become a member of our church. Of course, we would make him jump through a few more hoops in order to become a member. We said the money would be sent tomorrow. 
The promise of free money appealed to the scammer, who became interested in joining the church. Sister Dave sent Uchella a membership form and hinted at the next hoop he would have to jump through, a proof of faith picture. Time to make this package even more valuable. Sister Dave explained that the bank had refused the transaction due to suspicious activity related to fraud, but Sister Dave had come up with a foolproof plan. She went to the warehouse where the products were stored and managed to put the $22,000 inside a box of chocolates, and then she hid the box of chocolates inside the parcel. She reassured Uchella that the parcel had now been sent and that Uchenna would not need to pay anything to receive the package. At this time, the scam bait had started sending mails from a fictitious delivery company. These emails contained updates on the status of the delivery and a way for the scammer to track the progress of the parcel. We also introduced the scammer to a new character, Cliff Postubier. Cliff was the account officer at the delivery company and would be responsible for the entire operation until delivery. The scammer received another status update. The parcel was now at the airport in Scotland. And then it reached London, ready to leave the UK. Uchenna loved all this. Everything appeared to be going well, and he wouldn't even have to explain the $22,000 to his bank. He thanked Sister Dave for her great idea to stuff the cash in the box of chocolates. The package reached Spain. Time for Cliff to introduce himself. Cliff wanted to ensure everything was secure. Uchenna would need to provide ID. Difficult enough for a scammer, but he would also need to complete a biometric authentication procedure. This was free, but as you will see, required quite a lot of effort. The package reached Morocco. And Uchenna sent his ID documents. Cliff now explained what the BIP procedure required. The BIP profile requires a set of pictures to be made in specific positions. This will allow a compute algorithm to generate a unique and personal biometric profile for you, which can then be used to identify you upon delivery. To be able to distinguish any discerning marks or tattoos, you will need to remove your shirt and pants. Please note that we do not require nor accept nude pictures. It's important to perfectly comply. Underwear must be worn at all times during the photo shooting session. We then explained the eight poses Uchenna would need to adopt for these photos. And that it was recommended that the pictures be taken outside in a good light so that all your biometric details are visible. We explained that a software algorithm analyzes all these photos and creates a personal biometric profile. Cliff reassured Uchenna that the parcel had been classed as a high-value content and listed out all the contents, including, of course, one chocolate box. The parcel reached Senegal. Uchenna sent his biometric identification pictures exactly as requested. I thought I would protect his dignity and censor the photos he took of himself, but then I thought... He's a scammer and deserves the embarrassment. So here he is in all his glory. He also completed his membership or adhesion form to join the church. This contains some great entries from the scammer, such as him claiming that he comes closer to divinity by reading the scripture by heart, prayer, practicing humility, glorifying God through Christian songs, and practicing daily devotion with the children, and obeying God's commandments. Maybe not all of them, eh, Huchara? 
He also said his top three priorities were to speak the truth in love and serving school, church, moral values, not to compromise and to teach and learn. Although some of his documents were quite convincing, Buchanan struggled to be consistent with his signature. Cliff said he had passed on the biometric photos to the IT department and confirmed that the parcel had reached Senegal and would be with Eugenia in two to three days. We then introduced yet another character, the local manager, Akwode Odobandu. Cliff also asked our scammer for a favour. He asked him to complete a, a feedback questionnaire and explain that it is important Eugenia left good feedback as it meant Cliff would get a bonus. Oh, and as we know, Uchella has been using a black pen, so we said this one must be completed in blue pen. Uchella's feedback was very good. Excellent performance. Keep it up, and I will use your services in the future. We thanked Uchella for the super ratings. The resulting performance bonus we would now get would allow Cliff to buy his wife a hugely expensive pair of shoes when they go to Paris shopping that very weekend. We also wrote to the scammer as Sister Dave to thank the scammer for completing the adhesion form and to prepare him for the final requirement, a proof of faith photo. We explained what was required for a photo to be accepted. We said the package had now reached Akragana, only a few hundred miles from the scammer's location. Uchenna sent his proof of faith photo. He said how happy he was to be a member of our church. The scam baiters would make sure his gratitude didn't last much longer, but it was nice of him to dress up in his Sunday best for the photo. So now we had two characters working for the delivery company, which didn't exist, trying to deliver a valuable parcel, which also didn't exist, to the very excited scammer in Nigeria. Cliff told Equode to contact Uchenna and to support him with any expenses he may incur. Uchenna must be treated as a VIP and given the highest level of reimbursement for his expenses. If Uchenna chose to bring anyone with him to collect the parcel, then their expenses too should be paid, and paid generously. Cliff stressed to Equode that all costs had been covered by the sender, so there was nothing for Uchenna to pay. The goal was to make delivery perfect for the client. So why send an email from one scam baiting character to another? You'll see shortly why we did that. Cliff updated the scammer that the parcel was making good progress and that he had briefed the zonal manager at Quode on all the details. Cliff also laid the groundwork for being uncontactable later by reminding the scammer he was off shopping in Paris for the weekend. The scammer Uchenna was impressed with the progress and looking forward to Akwode's contact. He even wished Cliff and his beautiful wife a happy wedding anniversary. Our delivery company advised the scammer the package had now reached Benin in West Africa and then the city of Paraku. We wrote as Akwode to Uchenna, advising that the package was now available to be picked up from Benin and that all expenses would be paid. We were able to attach the email Cliff had sent to Equode to add credibility to the expense policy that had been approved. We also wrote as Cliff to Uchenna, vouching for Mr Equode as a man Uchenna could trust. Cliff again reminded Uchenna that he was going away for the weekend. More good news, Sister Dave confirmed that thanks to his lovely proof of faith photo, the scammer had now been welcomed into our church. Uchenna, the scammer, told Equode the good things he had heard about him and promised to send his travel expenses. Equode explained the completely untrue but feasible news that the delivery company no longer had an operating license to deliver into Nigeria. He said it in short, and then gave a very long, unnecessarily detailed explanation of why they had lost their license. So the best Equode could do 
was bring the parcel close to the Nigerian border. Surprisingly, that was all the convincing the scammer needed. He and his brother agreed to leave for Benin to collect the parcel. Akwode again stressed the generous expenses that could be claimed, and then lots of detail to make the fantasy delivery sound even more real. Uchenna agreed that meeting in a safe place was a good idea, and Akwode provided some reassuring information and suggested a suitable hotel for the meetup. This is the hotel in Semi in Benin. Uchenna confirmed they would drive to Semi. Akwode asked the scammer to send a photo of themselves in front of the hotel when they arrived. He also asked for the brother's ID as he was accompanying Uchenna. Many hours later, Uchenna said he had travelled to Benin and was staying in a slightly different hotel and would wait for delivery tomorrow. If that's true, then the scammer has travelled from his home in Okeyagbo to the hotel in Seme. That would mean he had travelled across southern Nigeria on some very dodgy roads over the Benin border into Seme. That's over 250 kilometres. Very satisfyingly, that's exactly what they had done. The following morning, he again sent the hotel address and a receipt for expenses. We said, as a quote, that we were having trouble locating the hotel on Google Maps. Taking a selfie outside the hotel might help. Uchenna was being very compliant. He sent his brother's ID. He sent directions to the hotel, which he gave in French from the hotel receptionist. And he sent a couple of selfies in front of the hotel. His brother looks to be enjoying himself, for now at least. Pleasingly, we had managed to get a few more ticks in the scam baiting tick list. In part three, you'll discover if we complete the full list. <laughs>